Hi, I'm Laren. This is Knife Still Nerds. Today we're talking CPM3V, which I believe is a criminally underrated steel. It's not used in nearly enough knives. And I did a series of new tests, which even more greatly cemented this in my mind. I'm going to show you what those are, and we're going to talk all about 3V and its properties. So let's get to it. The one thing most people don't know about CPM3V is that it is a powder metallurgy version of an older steel called Vasco dye. Vasco dye was patented by Harry Johnston of Vasco in 1964. Vasco was an old defunct steel company in Latrobe, Pennsylvania, and they developed a bunch of cutting edge steels, usually with vanadium, because Vasco is what its name is because they use vanadium in most of their steels. So Vasco dye was a popular 8% chromium dye steel. It created that category of 8% chromium dye steels. So before then, and still to this day, the most popular cold work dye steels are A2 and D2. D2 is used for higher wear resistance and A2 is used for higher toughness. So the 8% chromium is right in the middle. So D2 has 12% chromium, A2 has 5% chromium. And then they added 2.5% vanadium for wear resistance. And then they went relatively low in carbon at 0.8%, which is lower than both A2 and D2. And that gives it an interesting set of properties. They would advertise this deal as twice as tough as D2 and 10 times more wear resistant than A2, like making a new balance steel that has the best of both. And so this new category continues to this day. Other 8% chromium die steels you may have heard of in knives include DC-53 or Sleipner. Now you can read more about the history of Vasco dye and all of the developments that led up to Vasco dye in my book, The Story of Knife Steel. That book has all of the stories of how different steels were developed. Vasco dye never really got used in knives, though the higher carbon version, Vasco Wear, did get used by some knife makers and by Gerber in some production knives. Of course, today, CPM Crew Wear, the PM version of Vasco Wear, has gotten some popularity. In the mid-1990s, Ken Pino and William Stasco of Crucible were looking to make a high-toughness powder metallurgy tool steel. Up until that point, powder metallurgy steels had focused on other things, primarily high-hardness, high-speed steels, and also making new steels with really high wear resistance that were not possible with conventional steel making. The most common example would be CPM-10V with its 10% vanadium for really high wear resistance, higher wear resistance than anything that had been made before powder metallurgy was developed. Crucible's highest toughness PM steel was CPM M4, and that steel was really high in toughness basically by accident. They were really surprised that CPM M4 was so tough because it was one of the lowest toughness high-speed steels. Then they turned it into a powder metallurgy steel, and all of a sudden it was the toughest of their powder metallurgy steel. So it had a pretty good balance of properties. Udahome released a steel called Venatus 4 in the late 1980s to be a more balanced steel with higher toughness, but its toughness did not match CPM M4. This is a good example of how metallurgists didn't quite know how to develop steels to maximize certain properties yet, especially not for powder metallurgy, which needs a little bit different balance of elements than what you would design for conventional steel making. Udahome would later redesign Venatus 4 and call it Venatus 4 Extra, almost a completely different steel, based on what they then knew about how to develop steels. But back to Pino and Stasco at Crucible. They realized that what they needed was lower carbide volume. Powder metallurgy makes the carbide smaller, and they thought that this would lead to higher toughness, and it does, but to really get a high toughness steel, you still need to have less carbide. So they experimented with a few compositions, including a powder metallurgy version of Vasco dye. And they found that due to its lower carbide volume and all of those carbides being vanadium carbides, that it gave it a really high combination of toughness and wear resistance. Now, it surprises me a little bit that they managed to patent the steel since Vasco dye had already been patented back in the 60s. Now, by then, the patent had expired but all they're doing is changing the processing and making the same steel. But apparently the reason why they managed to patent it is because 3V had a different microstructure than Vasco dye. Vasco dye had these large chromium carbides in it because when you slowly cool a steel in conventional casting, it cools so slowly that the elements will segregate. So the chromium segregates to itself, and then you end up forming these large chromium carbides that form as it casts, and then you can't get rid of those with further processing. 
But with powder metallurgy, much less segregation occurs, and you can dissolve all the chromium carbides, and in the heat-treated condition, all you have is vanadium carbide. So they got a different microstructure, of course a much finer microstructure than the conventional version Vasco dye, and they really got a different steel, and apparently the patent office agreed. Now, somewhat surprisingly to me, despite the really good properties of CPM3V, it did not take off as a knife steel, and I would argue it still hasn't taken off as a knife steel. The first custom knife maker I remember using 3V with any regularity was Jerry Hossum, and in more recent years, maybe the best known user of the steel is Nathan Carruthers with his Delta heat treatment. Now, some knives are out there with 3V, don't get me wrong. Like, I see knives from Bark River, SE, Cold Steel, others, but it seems like there could be way more 3V knives than there are based on the excellent properties of the steel. I think it being non-stainless has held it back, because knife manufacturers tend to stick with stainless steels. Now, I did a new set of heat treating coupons for CPM 3V to see to what kind of hardness we can achieve with the steel. I wanted to go a little bit higher in the austenitizing temperature than I previously had for my book Knife Engineering. Though the whole times I did was 1850 Fahrenheit for 45 minutes, 1950 for 30 minutes, 2050 for 20 minutes, or 2150 for 10 minutes. Now typically CPM3V is heat treated in the 58 to 62 Rockwell range because of its excellent toughness, but you can go higher in hardness if you want. You can see that with a very high austenitizing temperature and a very low tempering temperature, I got up to about 65 Rockwell. The data sheet really only shows the steel going up to 61 Rockwell with their recommended heat treatment, but that's because they recommend heat treating in the high temper range of 1000 and 1050 Fahrenheit, while I prefer the low temper range of 300 to 500 degrees Fahrenheit. I prefer that range because of superior corrosion resistance and toughness. Now, looking at the microstructure of CPM3V, it looks very good. The microstructure is very fine and evenly distributed, as we would expect for a powder metallurgy steel. It has about 5% vanadium carbide, and it doesn't have any chromium carbide to speak of, despite the relatively high chromium content of 7.5%. ZTUF and CD1, they also have 75 to 8% chromium but it has about 3% chromium carbide and only 1% vanadium carbide because the vanadium content is lower and the steel is not balanced as well as 3V. And that chromium carbide is soft and means that ZTUF doesn't have as high wear resistance as CPM3V. CPM1V also has about 1% vanadium carbide and instead of chromium carbide, it has 2% M6C carbides. M6C are molybdenum tungsten carbides found in high speed steels. So 3V has a bit higher carbide volume than those two steels, but it is all the hard vanadium carbide type, which should mean a bit more balanced properties. One mystery about CPM3V toughness came from a patented crucible steel that was never released commercially, a modified version of 3V. This steel was patented in 2006 by two crucible R&D metallurgists. The very first article I ever wrote for Knife Steel Nerds was actually about this 3V mod steel in February of 2018. I didn't even advertise the article because I was just testing the website system to make sure I could write an article and have images and everything would function. And then I wrote a series on austenitizing first that I then went and promoted when I announced the new website. So hardly anyone read this article. But the modified 3V was designed by replacing some of the vanadium with niobium, and that made the carbide smaller. And they showed experiments in the patent that longitudinal toughness of 3V was really good, but the transverse toughness was really bad. Now, transverse refers to the orientation that the steel is in when they break it. And with a transverse toughness specimen, the crack of the specimen as it breaks grows along the rolling direction. The rolling direction is where the carbides and impurities are elongated because they roll it in that direction and then things are elongated in that direction. And so it gives an easier path for a crack to grow. So this transverse toughness was quite poor and pretty surprising how bad it is. Uh, when they tested the modified 3V with the finer carbide size, they reported that the transverse toughness was much closer to the longitudinal toughness. So for a set of new experiments, I decided to test both longitudinal and transverse toughness and see if the transverse toughness was really as bad as was shown in that patent. I used an austenitizing temperature of 2000 degrees Fahrenheit, I did a plate quench cryo, and I tempered at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. This resulted in about 61 and a half Rockwell. 
Now, the first surprise was that this was significantly harder than the earlier coupons that we tested. Those coupons were heat treated by knife maker Warren Kryko. He heat treated a bunch of toughness coupons for me early on for Knife Steel Nerds. And I think the cooling rate was probably lower in the heat treatments that Warren was performing. Uh, I explained this in last month's video on heat treating uh, in production environments where when you do a slower cooling rate, you end up with lower hardness and lower toughness because you get carbides that precipitate, the hardness goes down, and then those carbides also are detrimental to toughness. His cooling rate was probably slower because he was doing a bunch of steel at once for me to do all these toughness coupons of different steel in batches. And the coupons were probably thicker. It's a long time since we machined these, so I don't remember, but a lot of his steel was on the thicker side. So those two things combined meant I got higher hardness for a similar heat treatment than what Warren got. And when I tested the toughness, the toughness was still just as high as Warren's coupons, even though the hardness was higher. So that, that was surprise number one. We got a better hardness toughness balance with these new coupons than those old ones that I tested several years ago. Now his coupons were tempered at 400 degrees, just like mine. And we did a study several years ago, also me and Warren, on CPM crew wear, also called Z-Wear, and we found that a 400 degree temper led to better toughness than a 1000 degree temper. So I didn't bother with any 1000 degree tempers for this steel. Seems like the low temper usually gives us a better balance of properties. Now, when I looked at the transverse toughness, it was barely any different than the longitudinal toughness. Oh, in my test, it was only 7% worse. Now, there's always statistical variation between coupons. Maybe if I had tested more coupons, there would be a slightly bigger gap. But even then, we're talking a pretty small difference, especially compared to the Crucible patent on 3V mod, where there was a huge difference. So I think the Crucible test was some kind of anomaly. I don't know why they had an anomaly, but in my tests, the longitudinal and transverse were very close together, impressively so. The steel did very well. Now, when I plot that new 3V toughness test on my high alloy non-stainless toughness chart, the toughness of 3V now looks even better than it did before. It's now nearly rivaling Z-Tough, which is the, the highest steel on the chart. So 3V, really excellent toughness. Now, I think it does make sense that it can approach the toughness of Z-Tough because it doesn't have much more carbide than Z-Tough, and the carbide sizes are also pretty comparable. So I think that this makes sense, despite the mildly surprising result that we managed to get so close to Z-Tough when it comes to toughness. Now, one question you might have, is CPM3V going to continue now that Crucible went bankrupt and Aerosteel bought all of their powder metallurgy assets and trademarks? The answer to that is yes. Now, I'm going to release a video in the near future about what is happening with our knife steels as we go forward. I'm gonna to talk to Bob Shabala of Niagara about everything that he's doing to keep these knife steels coming. But if you wanna see that, you're gonna to have to subscribe to my channel. So go and click the subscribe button so you know when I release that video. Now in terms of Catra edge retention, I tested that way back when I did my giant Catra study a few years ago. And it did very well for its level of toughness. It got 463 millimeters in the Catra edge retention test, which is significantly higher than CPM1V and CD1 slash ZTuff. So looking back, I do think that the heat treatment was cheating a little bit because we only tempered at 300 degrees. And if you austenitize lower, then there's more carbide left in the steel for wear resistance. And so if you combine that with a low temper, then for a given hardness, you have a little bit higher wear resistance. So I think if we had chosen a little bit higher austenitizing temperature with a more normal 400 degree temper, I think the Catra would have been a little bit lower, but still that's only going to marginally affect the result. You know, it's still gonna be in the same ballpark, but either way, 3V, it does quite well in the Catra test, especially compared to other steels in its toughness class. And so when we look at the edge retention toughness balance, I updated my chart with that improved toughness result. And 3V really looks excellent compared to other steels. You see my orange line here, which goes through the best steels that I've tested for toughness edge retention balance. And the CPM 3V is a little ways above the line. In other words, it has a really good balance of properties. It's really 
difficult to beat 3v when it comes to the edge retention of a high toughness steel. So 3v really in a class of its own, I think. In terms of corrosion resistance, I've never done an official test on the steel, but it does have 7.5% chromium in it and zero chromium carbide. So its corrosion resistance can be really good for a non-stainless. Though some people talk about semi-stainless steels like D2, and if there were any steel that would fit in this category, it would be 3V. It actually has more chromium in solution than D2, which is probably the best known semi-stainless steel. Though Z Tough and CD number one have a similar chromium content, but they also have some chromium carbide. Same with CPM crewware. So we would expect 3V to be somewhat better. Now knife maker Scott Larimore and Kelly W did a, a real world, we'll call it, corrosion test where they left steels out in the elements after heat treating and polishing them. And they compared both the low temper version of 3V, or I should say version of the heat treatment, and also a high temper version. So the 400 versus 1000 degree temper. The high temper version developed rust out in the elements and the low temper version did not. So again, this is why I prefer the low temper on these steels, especially for stainless steels. But if we've got a semi stainless steel and we want it to have the best corrosion resistance possible, we should do the low temper range, not the high temper range. So to wrap it up, I think 3V is a, a severely underrated steel. I mean, it seems popular, like people like 3V, they never complain about 3V, but it just never gets that much press. It isn't used in nearly enough knives, I think. It has very high toughness and decent wear resistance and edge retention to go along with it, and the corrosion resistance is quite good for being a non-stainless steel. So I hope people continue to use 3V. I think it's a great steel. You know, it's been around for quite some time, but it's a classic that hopefully never goes away. So I hope you enjoyed this video. So go out there and learn some more about metallurgy.